Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on this Health Suppliers segment. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our guest in studio is Dr. Sammy Keller. He's chief of the Department of Neurology at Penn Presbyterian Medical Center, and he's here with us to talk about a rare and often misdiagnosed hereditary disease, uh, some treatment options, and faster diagnosis. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Keller. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, as a neurologist, talk about this, uh, this rare hereditary disease. So this is really a disease that affects uh, many, par- many organs in the body. All at the same time? Uh, well, no, at different times oh. and sometimes at the same time. It's a, very, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very variable disease from individual to individual. Um, so it, but the main organs that it affects are uh, often the heart, um, the uh, nerves in the body, as well as the uh, gastrointestinal tract and sometimes the kidneys as well. Um, but primarily it's a disease of the heart and of the nerves. Now, it's, um, it is a hereditary disease and it's called uh, H-A-T-T-R amyloidosis. Amyloidosis. I'm not, um, yeah, so th- that's a tough one. <laughs> yes, it is. I, and I've, uh, I do these interviews often and I've never come across that, I don't, I don't think. Uh, right, again, well, that, that attests to its rarity, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is a, uh, so amyloid is, uh, is really a transformation of, of a normal protein. So the TTR protein mm-hmm. um, is, uh, really stands for transthyretin, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, a protein that we all have that carries uh, thyroid hormone and it carries um, ret- retinol. Um, that goes to the eye. Um, that protein TTR is made in the liver, mm-hmm. and when people have the genetic mutation, um, the protein the protein is is not formed properly. So one of the amino acids in the chain is ab is abnormal, mm-hmm. and um, or, or is replaced by a, a different amino acid depending on the mutation. Uh, so, for example, uh, in in African Americans, there is a uh, which is uh, the most common mutation in the world is uh, one that happens in African Americans, um, where there is a uh, one of the amino acids the, is replaced by another, mm-hmm. um, and that w- w- when that happens, the protein then becomes um, misfolded, um, and when the TTR protein is misfolded because it's not made properly. Um, it then becomes insoluble and it deposits in the nerves and it deposits in the in the heart and causes uh, you know destruction of those organs. How how fast are we talking about uh, an onset of uh, the destruction of these organs with this uh, disease? So that's that's a really very interesting question. Um, the the reason it's it's so interesting is probably that um, this disease um, starts. Uh, when people are fairly young, so probably in their 30s, but may not, uh, you know, late 20s, early 30s, but may not really show up, may not manifest clinically until people are in their 50s or 60s or 70s even. So, um, you know, the the exciting part about treating this disorder today is um, making a diagnosis very early on because there are so many different treatments um, that are available. Now, how often is this uh, rare disease misdiagnosed and um, how many people are estimated to suffer from it if it is a rare disease? Right. So, um, you know, if if you sit in, in my office here at the University of Pennsylvania, you think like this is a disease that's coming out of the woodwork. It's so common because we see such a large number of these patients. But but really, there are probably, I don't know, on the order of 50,000 or so people worldwide um, and in the United States, uh, maybe 2,500 uh, uh, 20, uh, or 3,000 people with the, diagnosed with the disease. But uh-huh. the, the thing is that this is probably way underdiagnosed. As you said, um, you know, it is uh, difficult to di- uh, diagnose, mm-hmm. and, um, and it can take up to three years to make a diagnosis, you know, from the time the patient becomes symptomatic. Now, is that uh, estimated time period from symptoms to proper diagnosis, is that due to the slow progression of the uh, disease or to misdiagnosis based on symptoms that mimic other things? Right, exactly. So uh, so it's, uh, it's both a combination of those things. 
Um, you know, so the uh, when when people get it in their nerves, for example, they will get numbness and tingling, uh, which is very common uh, nerve conditions uh, like diabetes and alcoholism and drugs um, can cause you know nerve disease that causes numbness and tingling. Mm -hmm. The thing with with amyloidosis is it's progressive and it's kind of and it's relentless because this can be a fatal disorder. Um, and uh, the the thing about it is that people don't think of it uh, until the patient has really progressed and, you know, um, they've gone from doctor to doctor trying to figure out what's going on mm -hmm. uh, until somebody says, oh, yeah, well, maybe it's amyloid, uh, and then goes on to, to do very specific testing for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the testing is tricky, too. So that's another uh, reason why it's so hard to diagnose. Are there any symptoms that once they present, it's um, almost a sure fire diagnosis or a sure thing, or are the symptoms all over the place? What is the, how can one, you know, be alerted to start looking for uh, this type of testing, to start seeking this type right. of testing? Exactly. So, um, so uh, there are a combination of symptoms that should uh, be a red flag for amyloidosis. Uh, you know, if you have a man uh, or a woman in their 50s or 60s who have heart failure, for example, and they have a remote history 20 or 30 years prior having had carpal tunnel surgery, uh. that's a, that, that starts to give you a, a red flag that, hey, there's something going on that might be affecting, might have affected the nerves a long time ago mm -hmm. and is now affecting the heart, um, especially if that patient also has, you know, uh, uh, diarrhea and constipation that alternate, um, and then um, they also develop uh, orthostatic hypotension. So when they stand up, they get lightheaded and dizzy. Wow, that's uh, you know, so that's a fairly classic presentation of amyloidosis, where you have um, gastrointestinal symptoms, you have heart symptoms, and then you've got a prior history of carpal tunnel or uh, symptoms of a of a peripheral neuropathy with weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, when people have numbness, tingling, and, and weakness, you know, um, that's, a, uh, that's a red flag for, for amyloid. Now, you mentioned um, carpal tunnel surgery. Are we talking an association with the surgery or the carpal tunnel itself? So the disease, um, the amyloid protein, the TTR amyloid, will deposit in that, um, in the, over the flexor retinaculum, which is mm -hmm. the covering of the carpal of the carpal tunnel mm -hmm. um, and it, it it causes a pressure on the tunnel uh, and which then pinches the nerve um, so that is a process that begins very early in the disease in, in many mutations um, and so it's the, it's really the, the covering of the nerve um, sometimes it'll affect the nerve itself mm -hmm. as well but but that tends to happen later on in life um, uh, so carpal tunnel, as you know, is a very common condition. Many, many people have carpal tunnel all the time, and they don't have anything else. But if they have an additional, um, you know, history of, of heart failure or a more generalized neuropathy, then uh, you have to think about amyloid. When um, a diagnosis is made, uh, how complicated is the tr are the treatment options or are treatment options available uh, depending on what other conditions the patient may have, uh, maybe some neurological conditions or maybe age or something uh, else contributing to their health that's unrelated to the, uh, the disorder. Sure. Um, so, so before we, we get to, um, to treating the patient, you have to make the diagnosis. And one of the ways to do it is by genetic testing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in the United States, um, actually, El Nylum, uh, the pharmaceutical company, has a... Um, a program called Al Nylum Act, and um, there's a website, uh, alnylumact.com, where the genetic testing is free uh, for uh, uh, th through that program. Um, once you make the uh, the diagnosis of a, of the genetic disorder, um, then you can do a couple of uh, things. Um, a patient can have uh, early on in the disease can have liver transplantation. Okay. Because the TTR protein is made in the liver, uh, so if you take the idea is to take the the, bad, the liver that's making the bad protein out and give the patient a new liver, um, and that tends to arrest uh, or slow down the disease significantly. Mm 
mm-hmm. um, in in certain mutations, and, it's, and and certainly early in the disease. And that's the whole idea of making the diagnosis early on. Um, the other thing is uh, these new uh, medications that are um, being tested now. Um, uh, uh, one is through a company called Ionis. The other one is Alnylam, where um, the uh, protein, uh, TTR protein uh, levels are reduced. So these are suppressors of uh, the formation of the protein mm-hmm. um, by different mechanisms. And that, in at least in the animal models and in the preliminary human data, lo- is looking very promising in at least slowing the disease down. Um, there are uh, other, uh, so uh, an, an old uh, non-steroidal as was actually tested in a placebo-controlled trial. Uh, the, 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 the non-steroidal is called the uh, diflunazal or dolabid mm-hmm. is, the, uh, is the old name for it. So it's not a sexy one to use anymore for as a non-steroidal, but it seems to work in peripheral neuropathies from uh, hereditary amyloid. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of, um, uh, there's a number of different uh, uh, ways of treating this disease now, and and it's important to that we can make a diagnosis as early as possible. Alnylam is only available in the United States. Is that correct? It's only so, available so in the the, US. the program for genetic testing because the genetic mm-hmm. testing can be very expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the United States, um, Alnylam has a program uh, for free genetic testing, okay. which is uh, which is really good. Great, great. And where can our listeners uh, go online and get more information about Alnylam? So they can uh, go to alnylamact.com mm-hmm. uh, through that website, um, and uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. Well, thank you for coming in and speaking with us today, Dr. Keller. It was a pleasure. It was nice mm-hmm. to meet you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud.